What's up ladies and gentlemen and welcome to this POV review by Autotopanel. My name is Martin and today I'm finally taking a look at the all new BMW M5. So of course this is the successor to the very successful BMW M5 F90. So this of course is the G90 generation and like the elephant in the room is sort of an elephant. It was all about the weight because this is now a hybrid. Uh, we have it in speed yellow, which I think is super, super cool. I also have a few videos of an M Performance Edition in speed yellow as a Touring and as a sedan. But I think in real life, it looks way better than on pictures. So that's, that's like really good news. I really do like this spec. So first things first, let's start over here. Uh, we have the new Michelin Pilot Sport 5 S tire, so I'm also really looking forward to test driving that. And what we also have are carbon ceramic brakes. And since this is a very heavy car, in my opinion, you do really need these brakes because steel brakes, heavyweight cars, uh, they aren't the best combo. Carbon fiber mirror caps, carbon fiber roof. We have the M5 badge on the C pillar. That does look really cool. Uh, and at the rear, we have a new M5 logo with this like silver lining, which I think looks really good. Quad pipe exhaust. And we have this sort of Ferrari F12 thing in the middle. Not sure what to call it. So it does have a very M look from the rear because we finally have uh, flared fenders on the rear which is new for the M5. So with the F90, it always sort of looked like a 530i with, a, with an M-Pack. It wasn't really all that, you know, muscular to look at, not really that broad and brutal and aggressive, uh, but this, this really is. Let's have a look at what's underneath. So here we have the S68 4.4 liter V8 by turbo. Let's wait for the Traxxer to finish his run. It's less powerful than the old S63 4.4 liter V8, because as you might know, it had 625 horsepower in the competition trim, 600 in normal trim, and 635 in CS trim. This is 585, but we have a big fat battery. So the total system output is 727 horsepower and a thousand Newton meters, zero to 100, 3.5 seconds, 250 kilometers an hour, and optionally with the M drivers pack, 305. So on the interior, of course we have carbon fiber. Uh, we have an M Sport steering wheel, and we have two massive pieces of Duplo right here, which are now the M1 and M2 button. But on like an M3, there are like these little pieces of candy. And here they look like the buttons of a phone for elderly people. Other than that, we have fantastic seats, really supportive. Uh, you do have to like adjust them through the menu, which I think is a bit of a shame because as for like the side bolsters, I want to select the side bolsters, come on. I would like to have this on just a button right here, but you know, it's just not there. So we don't have the optional carbon seats you can get on like an M5 CS or with an M3, but you know, I'm sure they will come up with a competition or a CS or whatever at some point. Okay, let's just get started in hybrid mode. We have a lovely road ahead. There's a little drizzle, but we don't care about that. We have four wheel drive and we have a ZF eight speed gearbox. Um, so that was it for hybrid mode. Let's go into M2, everything in the most aggressive setting. Um, and let's just see, is it still M5 badge worthy? Because she is heavy, very heavy, but have they managed to mask the weight? Is 
it still fun to go to Austria or southern Germany on the Autobahn and then attack some mountain roads? Well, let me be very brief and clear, very much so. It is fantastic what they have done. I would not believe I am driving a 2.6 ton car or 2.5, what is it? I, I completely forgot. And do you know why I forgot? Because if you drive it, you just get lost in the experience. It's just that good. The steering is super nice, precise, direct. The car just pivots around you. You feel like the center of gravity is really your seat. So, how did they do this? It is remarkable. And the speed of it, I mean 727 horsepower, a thousand newton meters. Oh, that sounds very convincing. And it is very convincing. This thing just catapults out of a corner. I am, I, I hoped it would be like this. I just did not expect it to be like this. And I think the F90 is one of the most beloved generations of M5. And to me, this is just as good, really, just as good. Okay, so let's turn around here. The only thing missing for me is a gear lever. I know it's an automatic, so you shouldn't need it, but just the fact that you have something to to upshift and downshift with when you're like completely twisted with your arms and you can manage the gearbox settings which you now have to do in the iDrive menu. I, I do miss it. I don't know why but I miss it. Just something to remind you of a physical connection between you and the car. It is so freaking fast. So let's hit the setup menu and here you can see what we can adjust. There is a lot we can adjust. The drivetrain, energy recovery, drive logic, so that's the gearbox, uh, chassis, so dampening, steering, brake feel, M drive system, let's put that into four wheel drive sport, M sound, well there's not that much sound coming in the cabin or from the exhaust, it's not really all that exciting to listen at. The F90 also wasn't the best sounding car in the world to really understate it. So in four wheel drive sport we have more power going to the rear axle and the front axle is there to just claw your way back into an oversteery situation. It's not really the best conditions to push the car but it's getting slippery out here. There is just so much torque. That electric torque is so convincing. And a thousand newton meters, you really need that all wheel drive system. I mean, it would have to be completely dry for me to test it in two wheel drive mode, which it isn't now, but I think we just have to take it to the Autobahn because in these circumstances, this amount of power is just a bit too much to be honest. But to conclude, in the twisty bits, the M5, 
truly still is an M5. So for the Autobahn, we're going to use the auto mode for the gearbox. So we're in dynamic plus, which is for the hybrid mode, which is for short periods of time, the most amount of power. So that's the only downside I've experienced so far. The gearbox can be a bit clunky at times. Little like weird upshifts, weird downshifts. And that's where you sort of notice the hybrid drivetrain um, and the downside of it. Because of course the electric engine is in the gearbox and it sort of interferes with its more traditional function as a combustion engine gearbox. I don't know why, but it's sort of just the case. Okay, let's see, was that a valid 100 to 200? Yes, it was, 7.19 seconds. Let's see if we can improve on that. It is super, super quick. And it definitely doesn't feel like a heavy heavy car. I mean the same drivetrain is in the BMW XM and I just didn't like it in that car. I was like okay if this is going to be my first impression of the new M5 drivetrain wise then I'm really not impressed but for some reason they really got it right in this M5. I do think they used the XM as sort of a test mule for the M5. They they it was easier for them to accept that the XM would be more of a test case and maybe wouldn't be the most successful integration of the drivetrain, but they just had to nail it with the M5. So I totally get that. Okay, one more. Wow. Oh, those aren't really nice upshifts, to be honest. I mean, I do like a little sensation on an upshift, you know, a little jolt, but this is just too much. Oh, not very pleasant, no. That's something they can definitely improve on with like an update or a competition or whatever. So a 7.13 is the fastest we've done so far. which is sort of the same as an F90 M5. So yeah, I think that's a great result. We don't need it to be any faster. And that's like the overall feeling I have with the car. It feels like an F90. Some points it's better, some points it's a little worse. But overall, I think it's definitely on the same level. And that's really saying something. So optionally you can get this carbon fiber exterior package. So that's the carbon fiber roof and the carbon fiber uh, mirror caps. And that saves 30 kilos. But I do think it's a bit weird that with an M3 and with an M4 you get the carbon roof as standard. But with an M5 you have to pay extra for it. So 0 to 100 with launch control, 3.5 seconds, and that's exactly what we did. But circumstances today aren't ideal, so we really have to get it once it's in the BMW press fleet and test it at our usual spot on the Autobahn to really verify all those acceleration numbers. But so far, it's looking very, very good. Impression-wise and stats-wise. Now, luckily this morning we had a little patch of dry autobahn so here is a little run to the speed limiter
right up until its top speed, even the raised top speed at 305 or 313 at the speed limiter. But very, very impressive how it just keeps going and keeps moving that brick through the air. And I think the overall experience of the car is just beyond my expectations and it's just exactly what I hope for. Like F90 spirit with a few improvements and that's exactly what the G90 is. So no track driving on this introduction of an M car, which some might think is a bit weird. Even the journalists thought it was a bit weird that we could, could not drive it on a track, but for me, the M5 is about B road driving, especially Autobahn driving. So I really think in that like driving discipline, they, they really nailed it. I do think that if you would push it on a track, you know, eventually the weight will turn up and sort of destroy the driving experience. But I'm just really impressed with uh, the main goal of the M5 being the best, the most sporty, limousine or even a touring nowadays uh, for public roads so i am going to drive the m5 touring tomorrow and that video will come out a bit later so i can really tell the difference in a driving experience between the two so you have to be a little patient uh, for that video but they really really delivered and i think we should be happy for that for now, thank you guys for watching. Hope to see you at the next video. Go subscribe to the channel. Go click this video if you want to watch another one or go check out this POV Reviews playlist. Thank you guys for watching. Bye.